Hey guys, we're we're live. We're going live on YouTube right now. Sounds good. Thanks, Randy. Mm -hmm. Hey, Topeka, this is Eric. Can you hear me okay? Hi, Eric. I can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Kevin, you just got your third alderman. Thanks, Randy. I just I just saw that as well. Uh, sorry, we're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. It is 6.04 p.m. We'll start with the roll call. Uh, alderman Down, he was here. Alderman Clinker. I'm here. And Alderman Alexander. Here. Alderman Johnson. Absent. Alderman Bellato. Absent. All right. We have a quorum. Uh, first up, we have approval of the of the minutes. Is there a motion to approve um, the minutes that I sent out earlier this afternoon? Clinker. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Alderman. All right. We have to do a roll call vote to approve. Alderman Downey, who votes aye. Alderman Clinker. Aye. And Alderman Alexander. Aye. All right, three eyes. Eyes have it. Uh, minutes are approved. Next, citizen comments. I did receive one comment. Um, it references two pictures, though, and I'm unable to see what the pictures are, so I'm just going to read read the comment. Um, 
a reasonable public comment. So it says to the finance committee, I reviewed, uh, sorry, it's from, from Kay Byrne. And it says to the finance committee, I reviewed the most recent accounts receivables and accounts payable and have the following comments slash questions. Please review questions during review of accounts receivable and accounts payable discussion. Um, and then again, this is where it references a picture, but I'm, I'm unable to see what the picture is. It says the below accounts receivable report has electronic, electronic payments highlighted in yellow, but that should be broken out to specific accounts. There's no way to determine what these payments are for specifically if not broken out. Then they should have notes under each to reference the revenues accounts to post to. Number two, what is this miscellaneous Robinson engineering charge? Uh, who in Blue Island leadership reviews and validates work related to these listed in the accounts payable run Robinson engineering charges. Uh, thank you, Kimberly Byrne. All right, um, moving on. We have old business to start off. We have the range picker lease uh, renewal. Uh, I know last time we had Mr. Ruthenberg join us and there were some questions about what would be better to purchase or lease um, the new range picker. I believe Theodore is on the line now. If, if Teddy, if you wanted to discuss kind of what you uh, you learned in the last uh, two weeks, uh, the floor is yours, sir. Okay, hi, Alderman. Um, so the only thing I really have to add is I, we, I did get the municipal sale price for the range car, which is uh, listed there on the on this sale form. Um, the only thing, the only difference with the lease is there is an on-call maintenance program included with the lease. Um, if we purchase it, there is not one involved in, included, so we'll be responsible for all maintenance. Um, that's really all I have to add to the conversation. Um, all. Thanks, Steph. Um, so, okay, can you go? Can you go into a little bit of detail about just how beat up the picker gets, and how maybe that maintenance package would be important, especially with uh, with Mr. Martino passing away, who was kind of like our head mechanic there, and he was able to fix a lot of stuff. But I, I know there was always issues. Uh, so I don't know if you wanted to go into detail about about why that might be important this time around. I mean, I could do that. The uh, so the picker, you know, it's the range. The picker that's picking up the golf balls on the range, it's out there. Uh, probably, I would say, it could be out there four to five hours a day, bouncing around on the driving range. So you can imagine the wear and tear it does take. Um, so I mean, we've in the over the past couple of years, we put a used engine in the old one. Um, which is about $1,200. We've gone through some parts on these. So um, I'm not pushing for either one. I was going to leave it up to you, Alderman, you Alderman. And uh, I just think it would be better to have that on-call maintenance program included with the lease. So, and Teddy, I have another question. So we put in, and what, the, the lease, to lease it, it's, it's $5,000, around 5,000. And to purchase, it's around 7,000. Uh, no, Alderman, I'm sorry. It, the, what, are, what are the numbers? I'm, I think I'm just making the, numbers up. I'm sorry. The purchase price is $10,210 for the car. Um, the lease price is $312 a month um, for six payments out of the year. So that's a total of $1,876 per year, and that's a five-year lease. So that total so for five years comes out to $9,381, and the the sale price would be ten thousand two hundred ten dollars. And we have, and again, I, I'm just trying to drive home this point: is for five years we have this maintenance package that will cover wear and tear and and the issues that that have come up with the current picker. Is that is that correct? Did I understand you correctly? It is correct. Okay, uh, that's all all the questions I had. Uh, if there's anyone else on the committee who had. Uh, who had a question or comments? Yeah, this is uh, Jonathan. Is it in the budget? Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, it, it is. It isn't. Hi, Alderman Johnson. It is in the budget. Yes. Well, it's in the budget to be approved. Um, the, on the appro it's on, on the appropriation side, Teddy. Didn't we uh, forecast for the lease so not to purchase? Yes, Topeka, we did. Okay. 
Any other questions? Hi, this is Autumn Alexander. So, Teddy, I did look at the paperwork, the documents that you sent for the lease and the purchase, and I just, we've been dealing with this company for a while, right? Yes, we have, for as long as I can remember. Okay, so I know it's probably not much we could do now because you, it's time to renew the lease, but going forward, I think we need to be able to work out a better purchase program with them. Um, Cause when I looked at the purchase agreement, it had one payment for the purchase agreement. It had no maintenance um, warranty program coming along with that, except for a two year warranty. So I think they should be able to give us something a whole lot better than that. If we've been dealing with them a long time, you know, if we decide to purchase instead of lease, because there's not that much difference between the lease and the purchase price, only about what, $1,500, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and Alderman, right. I think, again, we need to look at this in the maintenance side of things where we have spent probably over three grand just the last two years. on just trying to maintain the current picker where if we purchase, picker we're going to be on the hook for all the maintenance all the wear and tear where it sounds like under the lease according to, to ted is that a lot of that's going to be covered where we're going to save money in the long run going this route if i can just add one more thing going with the lease though and you know in five years and that lease is over we i mean well, obviously we give up that cart and then we have to you know we're back to deciding if you want to go in a lease or purchasing um, so that's the only downfall, obviously, to leasing. Exactly. So, again, like I said, I think we need to be able to have a better agreement with them when it comes to purchase. Um, we've been dealing with them too long. We have a long relationship with them, and we should be able to show something at the end, you know, of a lease or an agreement with them. And right now we don't, we're just rolling it right back into the same situation. Lease after lease after lease. So we should be able to show something for our money. That's, that's my point. All right, thank you. If there's, if there's nothing else, uh, is there a motion to approve the, the lease agreement for the range picker? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Anyone want a second? You know, I'm kind of six to one, half a dozen with this whole idea. I'll second it, though. Okay, thank you. We have to do a roll call to approve. Alderman Donahue is an aye. Alderman Clinker. Yeah, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to say no. I like the purchase idea. Okay, Alderman Alexander. I'm going to say yes, only because there was no uh, maintenance program with the purchase. Okay, Alderman uh, Johnson. Uh, I'm gonna say no only because I think we need to try to send stuff out more out to be like they're not the only uh, you know, store in town. All right. Well, so it's two to two. The motion, the motion fails. Golf course doesn't have a range picker for the upcoming season, so. All right, moving along. We have uh, under new business, we have payroll February the 19th, 2021. It's in the amount of $364,551.53. Any questions about the payroll? Uh, I'm I'm sorry, um, Chairman. I'm still kind of torn with that with the uh, the picture thing. Is it possible to just table that thing, or is it too late? Alderman, we tabled it last time. Uh, the golf course season. I know there's three feet of snow on the ground, but it takes some. Um, I, Teddy, if you want to explain how long it takes to get these ordered, that if we don't get this done soon and we keep playing games with this, we're going to go a whole year where we're going to spend more money on having Teddy and uh, the employees of the golf course hand-picking golf balls, where it's, it's a waste of the employees' time and it's a waste of our resources. 
Um, so we're running out of time to get this order to have it in time for the season. Okay. So if you want to reconsider your vote, I think you'd have to just make another motion to approve. You want to do that, Dex, or no? No, I'm no, I'm I'm gonna keep it as it is, man. I, I'm sorry. I was just trying to trying to. Hopefully, I thought we had time to figure something else out, but I understand. Um, can I can I ask a question, Alderman? Yeah. Uh, what would you, I I um as of right now, I don't. We don't have a picker for the upcoming season, as Alderman Don who said. I don't know what, you know. I'm the purchase option is. I, I, either one is like as long as I mean, the the driving range makes thirty five to forty grand a year for the city. Um, I, I think it's an important piece of equipment. Um, I mean, maybe we can bring it back next meeting with some more details. I don't know. That's all I have to add. Thank you, Ted. Teddy, can you, uh, is it possible to find out, is there a maintenance agreement we could get with purchasing through, through the, through the company? Yes, I'm sure there is. I will, I will get that information ASAP. Great. And find out if, if there's a time crunch, if there's a time crunch to get this order, let us know and we can call a special meeting to get this done for you. Thank you. If, if I may add, uh, Chairman Donahue, um, Teddy, when you and I were, were talking during the appropriations time, the most important piece of this was that the rank figure deteriorates rather quickly. That's why the lease option was more feasible for the city from a fiscal perspective and from like a maintenance perspective. If anything happened with it, we'd be able to swap it out for a new one, and we wouldn't be able we wouldn't be at a loss for five seasons, right? Um, yeah, to be yes, Vika, that is what we talked about. <laughs> So I, I think um, the main thing that we just really need to consider is if we want to bite the bullet now and actually purchase the, the piece of the equipment, but we have to really consider the cost of maintenance, um, <clears throat> especially if we're thinking about over the long term having this piece of equipment and them, them being able to come out and repair it for us versus the machine being down if something happens to it. I doubt anything would happen to it within the first year. But maybe the second year is most definitely because from my discussions with Teddy, this piece of equipment goes down pretty quickly. So it would be more feasible for us to do like a lease option so we can swap it out. All right. Well, um, so Chad, if, if you could find out what the time frame is to get this figured out and then we'll just if we have to we'll call a special meeting and um, if not we'll just take it up at the last one if we have another week or so because I know you're telling me this was very time uh, important so all right so just let us know thank you Todd. And, and if you could if you could find out if there's a maintenance program if there's a maintenance program or a warranty that we could pay for it might be worth our while to purchase the thing and pay for a warranty like you do with a car <clears throat> or, or kind of we're not kind of comparing apples to apples here. We're comparing a lease that includes a maintenance program and a purchase that doesn't include a maintenance program. I understand it's a thousand dollars more or whatever the amount is, but you know, if the if the maintenance program is only another grand, what like I said before, I, I personally prefer the purchase. So. Okay, I will bring that back to you, Alderman. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Todd. Uh, moving on, so we're going to payroll. And for the week of uh, 2021, it's in the amount of $64,551.53. Is there any questions about the payroll? Hey, Terry, can you put your phone on mute, please? On mute? There's, there's a lot of sure. background noise coming uh, coming back from oh. from your uh, your bubble there. Yeah, possible I'm in my... How do I do that? I'm because I'm in my car. How do I mute it? <laughs> oh, I is there? Um, I'm not sure how it looks on the phone. If there's like a mute icon. Well, oh, you got it. Thank you. 
All right. Sorry, everyone. That was, that was just getting really distracting. Um, was there any questions about the payroll? Is there a motion to approve the payroll? Um, I thought I made the motion. Alderman. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. There's a, a lot of feedback there. So, Alderman I'll Alderman second Clinker. it. Alderman Clinker. All right. We got to do a roll call vote. Um, Alderman Downey, who votes aye. Alderman Clinker. Aye. Alderman Alexander. Aye. And Alderman Johnson. Aye. All right. Four ayes. Motion for payroll is approved. Next, we have uh, accounts payable for the week of February the 24th, 2021. It's in the amount of $244,000. $973.89. Is there any questions about the accounts payable for February 24th? Yeah, I've got one or two maybe. Um, sure, go Ms. ahead. Ms. Ms. Bird's email, I, I can't pull up the picture either. I looked at it on my phone. I looked at it on my computer. I'm not quite sure what, the, what it is. but So we, we're really not going to be able to answer her first question. But the second question, I think we could hopefully get answered. So what is the miscellaneous Robinson engineering charge? Maybe the budget director or the finance director can answer that. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I know. I know. Oh, go, go ahead. Or Eric. Eric. Eric's on the line yeah. Too, so, Eric so can yeah. So, yeah. So I can actually tell you what they have stated on the invoice here. And maybe uh, Eric Alvarez can provide a little bit more context. Um, so I have invoice uh, number 21010371 here. And it said they did a number of things that, that I would consider mis miscellaneous as well. They said they prepared and submitted Illinois State Water Survey. They provided the National Bridge Inspection Standards update to the city, coordination with bridge engineers on upcoming and past inspections. They provide city utility, utility atlas information, subdivision documentation, and survey requirements and preliminary MWRD permitting information to developers engineer for 2914 West 141st place. They coordinated the CMAP pavement management plan with ARA and the city. They prepared for it and attended proposed Metro South redevelopment preliminary planning meetings. They coordinated the upcoming and current CDBG projects with the finance department and they suggested funding source for general fund to be, oh, so that last one doesn't count. Scratch the last one. But all those other bullets are what's listed on here for that invoice. Okay. Um, and then her next question is, and this is just in case she's listening, and who in Blue Island leadership reviews and validates work related to these Robinson engineering charges? Can you address that too? Yes. Yeah, so for right now, it's uh, Mr. Mark Miller. He's our special projects coordinator. So a lot of times whenever I have questions regarding these, especially when they hit the TIF, um, I reach out to him directly. And he also reviews the ones that hit the general fund, too. So he's he's like our, our goal between between the engineering firm and the city. OK, yeah, I can. That's what I was pretty sure. Of, but I figured if Miss Burns listening or if she reviews this video, she can at least get an answer to that one. That's all I have, Kevin. Great. Thank you, Alderman. Um, any other questions? Yes, this is Alderman Alexander. Um, Topeka, were there any um, line items that was over budgeted for any of the um, invoices for this week's payables? Yes, so now we are into 2021. So the answer to that question would be no, because now we're, we're into 2021. We're paying expenses for 2021. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, any other questions about the accounts payable? No, hearing none. Is there a motion to approve uh, this item? Thank you. Right, thank you, Alderman. Is I'm there second. a second? All right, thank you, Alderman Alexander. On the roll call vote, Tony, he was an aye. Alderman Clinker? Aye. Alderman Alexander? Aye. And Alderman Johnson? No. Three ayes, one no. The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Thank you, everyone. Next, uh, we have the MWRD waste disposal fee. Uh, Eric, I assume this is this is what you're here for. If you wanted to 
you wanted to discuss that or let us know what's going on, floor is yours, sir. Yep, Thank sure. you. Thank you, Chairman Donahue. So a quick rundown of what this actually is, is so every year, and this report is for year 2020, the MWRD requires us to calculate the user charge for waste disposal of the leachate, which collects underneath the, um, the, golf, the golf course, being on an old landfill site. So this is the waste disposal fee for um, the pumps that pump that, that, um, that leachate water into the MWRD sewers so that it doesn't make a nuisance at the golf course. Great, thank you. Are there any, uh, any questions for members of the committee? This is, uh, I have one, this is the yearly thing we pay every year, I assume. Is that correct, Eric? Yep, correct. Exactly, Alderman Donahue, this is for 2020. And it's every February, so uh, next February we'll do um, 2021. Cool, got it. All right. Is there uh, is there a motion to approve uh, this item? Clicker. Is there a second? Anyone want to second this? I second. Thank you, Alderman. All right. We'll do a roll call vote to approve. Alderman Donahue is an aye. Alderman Clinker. Aye. Alderman Alexander. Aye. And Alderman Johnson. Aye. Great, four ayes, motion's carried. Thank you, Eric. Uh, next, we have presentation of the 2019 audit, audit status. I know Stephanie Blanco from uh, John Kasparic's office is here, who's our auditors. So Stephanie at, or Topeka, wherever the floor is, the floor is yours, thank you. Hi everyone, good evening. Uh, we wanna just provide a status update today. And we have finally finished all of the auditing work papers. We've finished our reports. We are sending the reports over to the city and to WRDR tomorrow so they can do their final review of all of the audit reports. And then once they finish their review of the audit reports, we'll get all the paperwork signed and finalized. And we expect that we should be able to have all of the final reports to you by the end of this week. And when we would like to at the next meeting then do a formal presentation where we can go over all of the details of the audit reports and our findings and everything that came out of the audit. We should be ready for that by the March 8th, but we should have everything finalized by the end of this week, pending just the turnaround time that we have with the review of WRDR. All right, great. Is there any questions uh, for Stephanie? Hey, Stephanie, can you give a, the committee just a brief overview of how 2019 ended for the year? You know what? I don't have all of that information available in a good format right at this point because we just were putting all the reports together. But I will have that by the next meeting. We'll have a detail of how everything came out for 2019 and then how that also compared to 2018. All right. Any, uh, anything else? No, all right. Okay. Well, I don't thank think we you. have to vote on anything. So thank you, Stephanie. We'll see you in, uh, you. in two weeks. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. All right. Um, next, we have a resolution approving the application of the CDBG program for 2021. Uh, Eric, was this was this you again? Yep, sure is. All the down in here. So uh, you all probably remember last month, um, we were given the go ahead to complete the grant application for this year's CDBG program. Um, so this is for a grant application this year for construction next year. So 2022 construction. Um, we took the, 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 the list of available streets to municipal services committee. They recommended that we look at new street between Maple and the end at the Metro tracks or kind of like Highland Avenue but really it's the end of New Street um, because it's in very poor condition. Um, we thought it was also a good candidate because um, last year it wasn't available for CDBG funding and this year it was, so it kind of comes in and out. It's in poor condition and it seemed like a good idea to kind of get this um, you know, while, while it's available. So what we're looking for is an approval of the, of the matching funds <clears throat> and um, to pass this as 
to pass this um, to full city council vote tomorrow because we need a resolution approving the, um, the grant application and the matching funds as part of the application process. So um, I can I can run down the cost estimate. All remain down here if, they, if, if, if you want. Yeah, please, I was gonna ask if you could uh, just let us know even just what the local share is. Thank you. Okay, yep, for sure. Um, so the local share we have calculated at um, 13,200 in staff salaries. Um, that's that's kind of like a figurative number because we just calculate a certain percent of public works, a certain percent of special projects and a certain percent of finance to be working on this. And then um, the other is a local match for engineering um, for engineering, geotech, ge so for engineering, drilling, and for construction materials testing, and that is 55,000, which brings the local match to a total of 68,200. Again, remembering that that 13,200 is matching staff salaries that, I don't know if you necessarily want to look at that as additional costs. It's basically just something to help strengthen our case for, for the grant application. Um, and the construction cost estimate is 258,000, which includes a 25% contingency because we haven't done any um, pavement sampling or anything like that in the area recently. Great. Are there any uh, questions, other questions for, uh, for Eric about this item? Yes, Eric, this grant is for resurfacing of the street, you said? Yep, that's right, Alderman Alexander. So this is for resurfacing of the street. I, I remember looking at it and it's in fairly poor condition. So it includes a lot of patching, resurfacing of the street. And when I say resurfacing, um, that, that means we'll likely be taking this back down to the stone or concrete base course or brick if that's what's under there. Um, so basically rebuilding the asphalt, likely rebuilding all the curves and, um, and then all the drainage adjustments and um, accessory work required. So, so we still need to get grants <clears throat> for this type of um, work to be done in Blue Island. I thought the purpose of the referendum reducing the number of aldermen from 14 to seven that I was totally against was going to use the salaries, the money from the salaries to do street, to repair streets and street resurfacing. So was that true or not true? Was it a lie? What? Um, Alderman Alexander, I, I don't really know about the you know, the cost of reducing alderman's fees or something like that. CDBG is just a Cook County Community Development Block Grant that we apply for every year. Um, and, and they they fund a lot of the work that, that we do for our capital improvements. No, I understand you exactly. But what I'm trying to understand is why tell the residents that the purpose of reducing the aldermen's from 14 to seven was to be used to repair the streets and do street resurfacing. If that was not true, it should not have been done. So we're still doing the same process that we've been doing before, reducing the number of aldermen from 14 to seven to do street repairs. That's all I'm saying. I just want to make sure that everyone knows that what was said for their referendum was not true. We still have to do the same process to get grant money to repair streets and do street resurfacing. The money's being saved from aldermen reduced from 14 to seven is not gonna fix anything. This is Alderman um, Johnson um, with the reduction of, of, of the Alderman. I don't even think it could fix an alley, to be honest with you, the money that would be curbed. But uh, for CDBG grants, we always did it because of the cost of what it takes to repair just a street, just one street. So with the savings of, of what they're supposed to be saving, as you said, and I agree with you, um, on that, it, we can't, we wouldn't be able to uh, pave an alley with the same from, from seven to, I mean, from 14 to seven. Okay, thank you, um, Eric. I am in favor of the grant, but I just wanted to make sure that that was said. And I am going to repeat it tomorrow at the city council because everyone needs to know that the lie behind the purpose of reducing the number of audience is a straight up lie. You're welcome, Alderman Alexander. Uh, all right. Any other uh, any other questions about, just to, uh, about just to just to speak on the condition of that street? It's horrendous. I, I it's three blocks from my house. It's in my ward. Um, it's awful. It needs to be done. So I don't know if we need a motion, but if we do, I'm going to make the motion. 
Yeah, we do have a motion, so thank you, Alderman Klinker. Is there a second I'll, to Alderman I'll, Klinker? I'll second it. Jonathan, thank second. you, Alderman. All right. Um, we'll have to do a roll call vote. Alderman Donnie is an aye. Alderman Klinker? Aye. Alderman Alexander? A definite aye. And Alderman Johnson? Aye. All right, four eyes. Eyes have it. Thank you, Eric, for uh, bringing this item forward. Um, You're welcome, Chairman Donahue, for sure. Next, we have aldermatic comments and concerns. Are there any aldermatic comments or concerns? Um, I just got a, a question, um, Chairman, and I don't, I don't know if you can answer it. I'm pretty sure. Um, sure. I've been asking for an audit for over 12 years, and a forensic audit and then we knocked it down to a procedural audit is anything um have came about or getting any closer to having anything of that nature i i'm not i i cannot answer that i don't know if Topeka can answer that or what the status is of that but i uh i apologize i cannot answer that so i'd like to jump in here before covid because we were still at city council meetings I believe Alderman Johnson asked this. I mean, I know Dex, I know you've been asking it forever, but I mean, I've just been on the council for two years. So it had to be last January or somewhere in there. I know you asked about it and the mayor promised that he'd look into it and get a, you know, a quote or whatever to get it going. And we haven't heard anything. Um, so I'd just like to add that. Thank you. Yeah, I, that's, I forgot. That was, it seemed that it was only a year ago, but it seems like that was like seven years ago. Whew. Um, yeah. Yeah, Dax, I, I don't know. We could, uh, I could, I'll shoot the mayor an email, um, but I don't know what type of response I'll get. If I do get a response, I'll make sure to share it with the entire committee, though. Thank you. Yep. Uh, anything else? Any other comments, concerns, questions? I'm sorry, all of them in. Donnie sure, here. go ahead, Annette. Um, I see the interim chief is on the Zoom tonight. I did see where the law was passed by the governor where the officers would now be using body cameras. And I know that that may, that may increase the finances for the police department to be able to purchase that equipment that is needed for all the officers. Um, have you looked into that? Uh, yes, Alderman, we have been looking into that. Um, we've been looking at uh, three or four different vendors uh, up till now. Um, as it stands, we are not uh, mandated to have the body cams until 2025, however. Okay, well, maybe I misread, but I thought it said June, June or July of 2021. It's uh, based uh, upon population uh, of your municipality, uh, and we qualify for the 2025 deadline. So I'd like to jump in here. And that just an FYI, we've been talking about this in public health and safety since before Chief Farr. I mean, it's been going... Chief Bernie was looking into it for probably six or seven months at least. Back when I started bringing it up on a regular basis was back during you know the, the riots or whatever back in June or whatever, May or June. So it is something that they've been looking into. Chief Farr actually has, I think was it three kind of quotes, Jeff. So it is something, it's also something they're trying to work into appropriations or at least we've instructed Chief Farr to work that into appropriations. So it is being worked on, I can vouch for that. Okay, that sounds great. You know, I want us to start moving forward with a different mindset of trying to prepare for purchases instead of purchasing and then trying to prepare on how we're going to pay for it. Absolutely. Great. Um, thank you. Uh, thank Chairman, you for that. I mean, sure. Chairman, down to you. Is the ALS uh, monies on the appropriation as well? Uh, because I assume the ALS money is going to be in there because it's coming from the CARES Act. Um, but I, I would let Topeka answer that uh, because I, she might have a better idea if she's still on. I don't think she's still on, Dexter, but I will, I will get, I will get a answer for you. I know they started uh, paramedic school either last week or the week before. Um, so I'm again. I'm just going to assume, but I will get you a definitive answer uh, tomorrow or sometime this week. In regards to appropriations, are we ever going to get any information? It literally has to be into the county by the end of next month. We have two council meetings scheduled for next month, 
So a month from tomorrow is the date that we would have to approve this. If I'm, if I'm right, I might be wrong, but I'm 99% sure I'm right. And we as the finance committee have seen nothing. We got a, a really nice PowerPoint presentation back at the end of November. And we're, we're at the end of the PowerPoint presentation and we haven't even seen, we haven't seen square one. I'm not saying nothing's being done. I'm just saying that we as the finance committee are responsible for approving this before it goes to council. And we have zero information in front of us. Right. Something I've yeah, asked I, for some months. No, no, you're right. You're right. And I, I, I'm hopeful where I, again, Topeka's off now, but that's, I think it's important that we definitely have to get it started so we can at least have, start having conversations. I've not seen uh, Topeka's, the, I'm sure, I know they're working on it. I've just not seen an actual product yet. Um, you know, so we did, we did this last year and, and we started, we as the, the finance committee started working on it. I want to say it was in January and it was rushed to get through by the end of March. We're really cutting it short here, which is why I've been asking literally for months, when are we going to get something? So it's right. just, I mean, it, this is our responsibility, something I don't take lightly. I don't think any lightly. I don't think anyone in this committee takes lightly, but, but it's ridiculous that we have zero information, nothing in front of us, nothing. We don't even have last year's final revenue and expense report. You know, we're, right. we're, we're, we're so far behind the eight ball now, it's going to be rushed to get through. And in my opinion, it'll probably be poorly done. So I, I will see, I'll talk to her tomorrow to see where we're at on the revenue finance and, and to nudge along her and whatever is outstanding. So we make sure we get it going the next, the next meeting. And again, if we have to call special meetings to do this, I, I have no problem doing that uh, just so we could get, we could get this done and it's not hastily and it's not uh well, it's going to be done hastily, but it's, we at least go through it with a thorough comb. Uh, so I will, I will work with Topeka tomorrow and this week to see what, where we're at and what, what we could do to get this, get this in front of us son. All right. Anything else? No. Yeah. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? Clinker. Motion. Okay. Alderman Clinker. Annette, did you want to second that? I'll second. Great. Thank you. We'll have to do a roll call vote. Uh, Alderman Downey's and I, Alderman Clinker. Aye. Alderman Alexander. Aye. And Alderman Johnson. Aye. Aye. All right. We are adjourned. Our next meeting is March 8th at 6 o'clock. We'll see everyone tomorrow night at uh, City Council. Good night, everyone. Be safe. Bye. Good see night. you all tomorrow. Good night.